In today's video, I'm going to be attempting to survive 100 days in hardcore Minecraft, but there's 1,000 mods. The concept is simple. If either one of us dies, the entire world no! gets deleted. Our challenge is to survive 100 days. We have three main objectives during the 100 days. Objective number one, we have to obtain full mithril armor and tools. Objective number two is to defeat the fairest raw knot. Our third and final objective is to find and defeat the Elder Frost Maw. This boss is harder than both the Wither and the Ender Dragon. You do not want to miss this battle. Day one began by chopping down a few trees, that way we could get our essentials. Shortly after crafting some of our essentials, we ran into some copper ore, and little do I know, there was arrows coming flying out of the darkness. The great thing about this interaction is as soon as the one skeleton shot me, it looks like I got a little buddy down there in the cave. He, he's got my back. So one of our main priorities right now is finding shelter, which means we need to get a crap ton of these trees. That way we have enough blocks to start building our shelter. Shortly after gathering a lot of our building supplies, we stumbled upon a village. As we were investigating the village, we ran into a village lord. That is something we did not want to mess with, so we just kind of walked by. One of the great things about finding this village was it had a lot of beds, which means we were able to make it to day two. And day two started off very nicely, finding an iron sword in an item frame above my bed. Right outside of the village, there's this awesome beach with tons of different animals, such as the crabs, and we found this like little shipwreck, so we decided to investigate it. While investigating, Forrest found a secret entrance with a chest containing a balloon. We weren't really too sure what it does, but apparently it actually just makes you jump higher. So we started swimming back to base and realized we were under attack by some sort of killer eel. So we had to kill this thing fast. Whenever it was attached to me, I was unable to move, so we had to eliminate it. We decided that this beach right next to the shipwreck actually looked very aesthetic, and we thought it would be a very cool place to actually start building our home. So we started to build this bridge over top of this small pond, and then we started making a path that would lead lead over to our house. Looks like cutting down all those trees at the start really is starting to pay off. So from the afternoon all the way into the evening, Forrest and I worked on creating this masterpiece. As nightfall comes, Forrest and I lie down, we close our eyes. As soon as we close our eyes, we get jumped by spiders and zombies. Forrest had to evacuate because he got very low and didn't want to die. The next step in our agenda was to get a crap ton of sand so we can make glass. Gathering all that sand really paid off. We were able to essentially cover our entire base, all of our windows, filled with glass. That way, hopefully, we don't have any more monsters waking us up in our sleep. A few days later, after building and grinding, we were able to make this fairly large estate, multi-story estate, and it's really awesome. It has a big overlook of the sea, and you can even see the shipwreck from our balcony. As day six comes to an end, you can see we've built this awesome base. There's even some dirt on the roof that we are going to be making into farms later on once we gather those supplies. In the morning, Forrest and I spotted a lot of grunt guards sitting in a hole. What are they doing? So our next objective was to go caving. We really needed to get a lot of new ores. That way we can make some new armor. And we ran into this skeletal horse and Forrest decided to give it a smack. He kind of got hit hard for that, but it was no problem for us. So as we continued our descent, we ran into a few zombies and spotted a zombie spawner. We went ahead and lit that up real quick. And shortly after, we heard noises and we saw some weird looking troll in the shadows. We didn't know what it was, so we got closer and it ran at us what, what seemed to be some sort of war hammer. Forrest and I were very hesitant to get anywhere near that troll. With that hammer, by the looks of it, it could one-shot us. But the good thing is our grunts were to our savior today. All of them gathered up in a group and we're beating the troll as the troll just wanted to kill us and just like that that troll was defeated dropping a legendary war hammer as you guys can see this hammer is no joke day nine we returned to the cave to mine everything inside of it Oof, man, that goblin almost gave me a heart attack. Anyways, at the start of day 10, it's time to go to the beneath. It was at this moment, me and Forrest kind of got freaked out. We broke the final piece to the puzzle. 
we now were entering the Beneath. And now that we've entered the Beneath, we needed to find Mithril Ore. So what we did immediately was essentially light up the surrounding areas with torches and try and eliminate every mob that we possibly can. After fighting enough mobs, we realized that this Warhammer takes way too long to swing. So what Forrest did is he went ahead and made me two iron sabers. Now we are dual wielding. Now that we've cleared a lot of the mobs and lit up a lot of the cave, we were able to start mining our mithril ore. So from day 10 all the way to day 17, that's all we did. We searched the entire caves and found as much mithril as we can. We needed enough to make two full sets of mithril and that is exactly what happened. After Forrest made a chopping block, we put a log on there and made bark. After making this millstone and hand crank, we were able to make scoured leather. Alright, so now we have this cauldron. We have to put the scoured leather that we made and some bark in there. And that makes tanned leather. Day 21 to day 22, we built a windmill so we can have some sort of energy source. And as you guys can see, it looks amazing. The materials are the same materials we use to make our mansion. We made coal dust combining with iron ingots to make steel ingots. After we smelted the crucible steel ingots, it was time ladies and gentlemen. It was time to build the steel anvil. With the steel anvil being made, we were able to put in our mithril rods. We were able to put in our blaze rods and finally the mithril ingots creating our mithril sword. And look at that, we are now dual wielding mithril swords. We spent the next few days gathering enough supplies to make the mithril armor. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we made it. We are now full mithril armor. In the evening of day 27, we figured it was time to enchant some of our weapons and some of our armor. So that's exactly what we did and we found fire aspect one. I guess it's a good thing that we enchanted our swords and armor because zombies were legitimately breaking into our house, digging through the caves and finding exactly where we live. So we figured we'd help some of the grunts by taking down some of these zombies. And they actually have quite a lot of health, so it took quite a lot of hits to take these things down. But we managed to do so. After traveling in the wild for five days, being fully enchanted with mithril armor, we stumble upon a Cyclops cave. One of the Cyclops special abilities allows him to pick you up and eat you. It was time ladies and gentlemen, the battle commences. I go in immediately and take two massive shots at his legs. While Forrest continued to put arrow after arrow, I take another couple shots at him and I back away very quickly so I don't get picking up and eaten. I needed to figure out another strategy, a place that I could go to attack him without being attacked. So we build up. We found ourselves standing above the Cyclops head while Forrest attacks him from the bottom. I am attacking him from the top. And ladies and gentlemen, we have defeated the Cyclops. Three long days go by after returning to base from killing the Cyclops. It was time, ladies and gentlemen, that we enter the nether. After two days of traveling and mining, we ended up digging out of the hole only to find a nether fortress. First place we went is right here because we could see the chest right through the little fence windows. And we found these little totems of returning, which I guess essentially returned you to your previous location. So that's pretty cool. Shortly after getting the chest, this enderman had it out for Forrest. Forrest nearly goes down and dies. And I'm trying to figure out how to defend him. So Forrest hides in the corner and yeah, he's already at half HP and I hear the Enderman and I see it through the window. So what we do is we go inside and we finish it off. Not only do we kill that, but this pigment starts attacking us. So we take that down too. As we're running around and exploring some of this nether fortress, all of a sudden we hear some fireballs. Out of nowhere comes a bird flying through the ground, setting forest on fire. I go over here, take down a wither skeleton, and another bird comes flying through the ground, getting forest to very low HP. After roaming around this nether fortress, after almost dying multiple times, we finally found the blaze spawner. The reason why we needed so many of these blazes is because we needed to make strength potions if we want to stand any chance at killing the Ferris Rawnaught and the Elder Frost Maw. 
Very shortly after farming these blazes, I realized I was on three hearts. Now, if either one of us dies, the entire world gets deleted, so we needed to make sure that we do not die. We built a little bridge and dug ourselves into the wall. Boris and I decided to give it one more go at killing the blazes. As we're killing our first blaze, it instantly blows up, putting me down to very low HP. I am currently on fire and nearly die. This was the last of it. We did not mess with these blazes anymore. By the looks of things, Force and I were a little in over our heads, so we needed to make an escape. Instantly, we dig out and run. We don't look back, we just run. We definitely overestimated how strong our mithril armor was. It is no match for a modded nether. So we spend the next couple of days running back to our nether portal. In the afternoon of day 39, Force and I started creating our barn. This is where we're going to hold not only our horses, but other animals that we find as well. So this is the progress that we got so far on our barn. I'm trying to work as much as I can, but you know, it's hard, it's hard working with a guy that just throws snowballs at you the whole time. But... The farm is looking pretty good. As you guys can see, four days later, we were able to complete the barn. Now, the roof isn't fully complete, but d just don't look at that. Of course, we don't have any any animals in here, but we managed to, to get a, a pet grunt. I, gu I guess that's an animal, right? So, as you guys can see, lots of detail was put into this, and that's actually why it took us four days to make. Once again, continuing the same pattern as our windmill and our mansion. As you all can see, our neighborhood is coming along really great, and there's just a little opening in the middle that we're gonna put a blacksmith. On day 44, we started the creation of our blacksmith, with the cauldron being in the center, and suddenly... Oh my goodness, I, I'm hoping that that's the last jump scare that I get because dang, that is so freaky and the sound of that rat. And as I'm explaining that, Forrest gets attacked by a brain slime. Not a regular brain slime, what seems to be a giant. And essentially they jump on your head and start eating you. So we had to take them down fairly quickly. Upon finishing our blacksmith, we notice zombies have torn into our base. Forrest and I immediately head in, finding a spider on our right side, a special zombie in the back, which is spawning slugs all over our floor. We are able to take them down fairly quickly and we have to start repairing the damages. Two days later, after being attacked by rats, brain slimes, zombies, slugs, we finally finished our blacksmith. From days 47 to 51, Force and I headed out. We needed to find some hippogriffs. Unfortunately for all of these rabbits, we had to take them out. Only because we needed the rabbit feet, that way we could tame the hippogriffs. Oh god, I feel like a jerk for killing all those rabbits, but ladies and gentlemen, on day 52, we found our first hippogriff. And as you guys can see, it doesn't really trust us much, so we gave it some rabbit feet. So we threw him the rabbit foot, and he ate it away. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, he was tame. So Forrest went ahead, gave me the saddle, we geared up, and look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we have a hippogriff. Since I had never flown a hippogriff before, I wasn't too sure of the commands, and I tried to go down, and I jumped off of my hippogriff. Luckily for the water underneath us, we lived. If it was land, we would have died, and our entire world would have been deleted. On day 53, I was looking to get Forrest a hippogriff, and I ran into a dragon. This dragon was trying to kill my hippogriff, and I was not gonna let that happen. So, we gave it a couple smacks and did quite a lot of damage. We were going in for another hit, and the dragon spiraled and dove into us, doing five hearts of damage to my hippogriff, but at least I was able to trade another shot with it. We switched on to our fire sword and hit it, and it caught fire, and it was defeated. The dragon has been taken down. Two more days goes by as we kept looking for a hippogriff and we finally found another one. And it was actually killing bulls. 
Like, this hippogriff is a savage. And on day 56, Forrest and I have made it back to base. All we have to do is put our hippogriffs back in its cage, and then we are good to go. After a very intense week has gone by, we figured we needed to do something more relaxing and focusing on the base more. So we started by gathering animals. So we got a chameleon... We found a reindeer, so we brought that in. Listen, guys, don't judge me here, but listen, I was thinking about the animals, okay? We needed somebody to protect them, so we got a grunt. We found ourselves a goat, so we're gonna put that in here. I even got Forrest's reaction to me bringing in a pet frog. He seemed very confused. <laughs> okay, guys, I went a little out of my way on this one. I went ahead and stole the village lord. Yeah, you're gonna be my pet now. For the next four days, Forrest and I searched around for every Enderman we possibly can. We thought it might be in our best interest to get as many Enderpearls as we can to fight the fairest Raw Knot. We got pretty lucky in a sense, as it was a blood moon, meaning tons of mobs spawned throughout the night. So we were able to get Enderpearls fairly easily. Day 67 came and we placed our upgraded enchantment table. We were planning on fighting the Ferris Raw Nut very shortly and we needed to make sure that we had the enchants necessary to eliminate him. So what we did is we enchanted Sharpness 5 on both of our swords. So from days 68 to day 70, I worked on the Netherwart farm as Forrest worked on brewing more potions. And the day has come, day 71 to day 76, we were spent looking for the Ferris Raw Knot. We found ourselves roaming through a very big cave, which actually went down very far. We spotted some grunts down there, which is a good sign. Upon further investigation, Forrest and I have finally found the Ferris Raw Knot. After Forrest and I potted our strength and speeds, we run in and try to hit it and immediately get knocked up. We realize that our attacks don't actually do damage to this thing and we need to figure out how to hurt it. But we also have to remember getting hit by it one time will kill us, so we cannot get hit. After trying to fight it for quite some time, we realize that there's a diamond sword in his back. What if the way to kill him is by hitting him from behind? after he uses an attack so that's what we did and there we go as we keep persisting and swinging we dodge a massive swing which allows us to get another hit and as we go in for some more shots he swings one shotting everything as we exited the tomb to repot our strength and repot our speed we made another attempt to get inside he goes for a swing which allows me to get behind him to get the hit and it doesn't work so we have to dodge another hit by jumping down this hole. As it walks back in towards me, it goes for a swing and just barely dodges it, allowing me to eliminate the Ferris Rod Nod. Wow, so after that insane battle, he dropped two items, one being a massive cleaver and one being a helmet. As you can see, Forrest is wielding the cleaver. It also has special abilities like the shockwave, which knocks you up off the ground. That is pretty awesome. Three days of traveling back to our base, and on day 80, we had some weird-looking zombies creeping us out outside of our base, so we kind of had to take them out. After traveling from day 81 to day 86, we found ourselves in an ocean, and through the fog, we could see a pirate ship. As for St. Iron fully enchanted mithril armor, we've killed bosses already. We felt very confident that we'd be able to do this. So we hop out of our boats and we throw our ender pearls on board and we go slaughter everything. Oof, that was exhausting. Anyways, after eliminating all of the pirates on this pirate ship, we went ahead and scavenged around for loot. We didn't find anything too useful, but one of the most noticeable things that we found was this TNT. After filling the boat with TNT, we made our own fireball and decided to start launching fireballs at the ship. Here's what happened. Four days later, on day 90, we made it back to base, and we prepared to leave to look for the Elder Frostma. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be insane. Five days of traveling goes by through the winter breeze, and as we're running on this ice, we spot 
The Elder Frostmaw. Forrest and I start creeping up very close. We start by drinking our strength potion and then our swiftness potion. As I'm sneaking up behind it, it awakes and knocks us back. It starts by casting ice crystals out of his mouth, which frees you in place. We weren't really too sure how to go about this. All of Forrest's arrows were being knocked away. I decided I'm going to go in for a hit, and as I did, I got ice crystal in place, taking a pretty good amount of damage. I thought it may have been over. As my hearts regenerate, Forrest gets a lot of hits. I go in to help him and get ice crystal and almost die once again, luckily breaking free. Forrest and I decided to regroup and repot our strength and our swiftness. Zombies were coming out of nowhere, interrupting this fight but it was not gonna stop us from killing this. We gather up close and get a good shot at him and his forest gets frozen by the ice crystals. After sneaking another hit in, he pushes us away with his roar and we go in and get a few more hits as Forrest gets chunked down really badly by the ice crystals and almost dies. But good thing he was able to splash his potions before that happened. As the Frostmaw is distracted on Forrest, giving him ice crystals, I go in for the finishing blow, eliminating the Elder Frostmaw. Oh my goodness, and just like that, ladies and gentlemen, the Elder Frost Maw was finally erased from eternity. And five days later, on day 100, Forrest and I have arrived back at our home. We have the Ice Crystal, which we use on Forrest to demonstrate. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, we've proven we can survive 100 days. Now the question is, can we survive 200?